In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a vertical video in Premiere, so you can edit your YouTube Shorts, TikToks, and Instagram Reels. Three, two, one. Here we go! Hi and welcome or welcome back to DIY Film with Merle Becker, the channel where I help you make better videos. As always, stick around to the end of the video for a bonus tip. All right, back in the day, vertical formats were frowned upon in the filmmaking world, but not so much anymore. If you're creating content for YouTube Shorts, TikTok, or Instagram Reels, you're gonna need to flip your video on its side. Because vertical is the native aspect ratio for these platforms. So let's show you how to do it. In this video, I'm going to show you how to edit a vertical video even if your video was shot horizontally, and also if it was shot vertically. I'm using Premiere version 22.1.2, so if yours is older or newer, it might look slightly different. And for this video, I'm going to first do an example with a piece of footage that was shot vertically, and then I'll do an example with footage that was shot horizontally. All right, so let's create a new project here. And once Premiere is open, bring in your footage. I have a little shot of the Corsica Mountains in France that was shot vertically, so let's import that into the project. By double-clicking in the gray area in the Project tab and navigating to the footage. Next, you want to create a sequence to edit in that has a vertical or 9x16 format. When making a new sequence, the easiest way to create one that matches the frame rate and dimensions of your clip in Premiere is to first make sure there are no sequences loaded in the Timeline tab, and then simply drag your clip into the Timeline tab. Then Premiere will automatically create a sequence that matches the settings of your clip. So let's do this. Now give your sequence a new name so it's easy to find. I'll call mine Hello from Corsica. Next, let's check the sequence settings to verify that we have a vertical sequence that matches our clip. Because remember, this clip was already shot vertically. And since we created a sequence that matched the settings of the clip, our sequence should also be 9 by 16. To check, let's highlight your sequence, go to Sequence, Sequence Settings, and here by Frame Size, we can see that it indeed says 9 by 16. Okay, so let's do a quick edit so you can see how to export in vertical format. I'm going to add some quick text, like so, then export. To export, first set your in and your out points on your sequence by putting your playhead at the beginning of the sequence and hitting I on your keyboard, then putting your playhead at the end of your sequence and hitting O on the keyboard. Now go to File, Export, Media. I'm going to pretend this video is a YouTube short, so here I want to choose a format that's best optimized for YouTube. Adobe Premiere has several great presets for YouTube that have ample compression, which will allow for a quick upload while still maintaining relatively good quality. So let's use one of these presets. First, make sure your format here says H.264, then let's go down to the preset drop-down menu. And scroll all the way down to YouTube 2160p 4K Ultra HD. Now, even though this footage wasn't shot in 4K, I usually like to export in 4K, mainly because I want my viewers to have the option to view in 4K, even though the clip is not a true 4K. But truthfully, I usually shoot in 4K. This clip happens to be stock footage, which was shot in 2K. Also, I should note, if you're exporting your video for TikTok or Instagram Reels, the Adobe YouTube presets will work well for these also. Okay, so now we have our YouTube 2160p 4K Ultra HD preset selected. Under that, make sure your final export is going to the folder you want it to. I'll select my finals folder. Then I want you to go down here to the video tab below, where we'll need to change it to a vertical format because this preset was designed for a horizontal video. One way you can tell this before you even look at the video tab is that if you look at the preview on the left, you can see your output is currently horizontal. Here, the shot is in the middle, and then there's black on both sides to fill up the horizontal space. But we're going to change that. By unchecking the Preserve Aspect Ratio button here in the Basic Video Settings under Video, so that it now has a little line through it. By doing this, we're telling Premiere that we don't need to preserve the aspect ratio because we're going to need to change these numbers here. Now I want you to reverse the numbers on the bottom and the top. We want the width to be the height and vice versa. 
So first, put your bottom number on the top. It's important to do this one first. If you don't do the bottom one first, you'll get an error message. Then, after that, put the top one on the bottom. So now, if you look at your preview on the left, you should see that, indeed, you changed it to a vertical format. There's no black on the left or the right. And now you're ready to export your YouTube short, TikTok, or Instagram reel. Hit export and done. All right, so now that we've gone through the process of editing and exporting a TikTok video that was already shot vertically, let's quickly go through the process for horizontal footage. So back to the new project. And let's bring in your horizontally shot footage. I have some footage from Milos Greece, which was shot in 16 by 9. So like before, I'm going to drag it to my timeline area. So Premiere creates a new sequence that matches the settings of the clip. Then I'm going to rename my sequence in my project tab so that it's clear which is my sequence. I'll call my sequence hello from Milos. Now change your sequence so that it's 9 by 16 or horizontal by highlighting the sequence in the project tab and going to Sequence, Sequence Settings. Then you're going to reverse the horizontal and vertical values under the video section by the top. So I'll put 1080 by horizontal and 1920 by vertical. And you'll notice that the aspect ratio after these values has indeed changed to 9 by 16. Hit OK, and when you get the error message warning you that you'll lose your preview files for the sequence, hit OK. That's just Premiere telling you any preview files it created to assist playback in the old horizontal sequence will be lost. But that's okay in our case. And now you see in the Program tab that you have a vertical sequence. However, you'll notice that now you have to make your clip bigger so that you don't have black on the top and the bottom. Do this by highlighting your clip in the timeline by clicking on it once and going to the Effect Controls tab and clicking on the value by scale and dragging it to the right until you don't see any black on the top and the bottom anymore. You can also enter a value in manually by clicking on the number and typing in your new value. All right, so now you have your video sized properly. You can also change the position, moving it left or right up here if you want, but I'm going to leave mine centered. I'll now enter my text. And now let's export the video. Same process as before. Playhead to the beginning, hit I. Playhead to the end, hit O. File, Export, Media. Then in this window, make sure it says H.264 by Format. And in the pull-down menu next to Preset, let's choose the 4K YouTube preset. YouTube 2160p 4K Ultra HD, which, as mentioned, will also work for TikTok or Instagram Reels. Then make sure your output is going where you want it to. I'll choose my Finals folder and make sure there's a line through the Preserve Aspect Ratio icon under Video, Basic Video Settings. And then reverse the height and the width by first putting the bottom number on the top, then the top number on the bottom. Hit Export and your video will export. Upload to Shorts, TikTok, and Reels, and then pack your bags and take another vacation. All right, let's do a quick tip. Whether you're editing your shorts, TikToks, or Reels, if you're adding text in Premiere, make sure it stands out and doesn't blend in with your image. You can do this by first adding your text, then going to the Effect Controls tab and scrolling down to the text section. Put a check mark by shadow to give your text a drop shadow, then darken the shadow by changing the opacity to 100 and make it a little bigger by changing the spread to a higher number as well. Continue to adjust the values until your text really pops. Ah, so much better. Because nobody wants to work that hard just to read a little bit of text. All right, as always, if you found any of this helpful, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell so you know when the next one is posted, and I will catch you next time.